I am a little bit under the weather today, but I knew I needed to get my next voting and election activity video out. If you have any questions about anything, please let me know down below. However, when I'm editing, if I notice I'm unclear about something, I will try to make clarifications throughout the video as well. So let's get started. Today I'm going to share with you a few more of the activities that I like to include when I'm teaching about voting or the election. In my last video that focused on this, this particular topic, I shared with you the fact that I always like to introduce some key vocabulary as well as some themed literature before beginning any hands-on activities. And I just like to do this to make sure that my students have a grasp of what we're learning about as well as an opportunity to ask a few questions. And this assures me that the students have a firm foundation for our structure and it also provides an opportunity for me to hit multiple learning styles. Now that I have set that foundation for them, I want this concept to come alive for the students. In order to do that, I want to create an opportunity for them to vote. I want their first voting experience to mean something to them while still connecting it to our academic setting. So I have them vote for their favorite book. Reading for pleasure is something that I personally have always encouraged because I believe if you have the students start reaching for a book that they like, you're going to create those lifelong learners. Now I personally don't create a list that the students have to, to choose from. I don't have them choosing from our favorite read-alouds throughout the year or anything like that. If you do, that's great. Um, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I just do this from my own personal experience because I have participated in this activity and it was always disappointing to me because my favorite books are written by a retired pastor. They're historical fiction, but since they are written by a Christian author, they were never on the list. So I want to make sure that my students have free range on this and they are given the opportunity to vote for their favorite piece of literature, whether it's a comic book, a graphic novel, a picture book, or a novel. We get our results either after recess or the next day. We do discuss this previously, so there's no big surprise if they don't get the results the next day. The factor on this is my teacher day, and if I have any meetings or anything, that will hinder me calculating up the results. Of course, if we have a tie, we'll just take another vote to see who our winner is. We then spotlight this piece of literature in our classroom. We do a read aloud, conduct experiments, we create crafts. It's just a really fun experience that makes voting come alive for the students. My students now have experience with voting for something that's personal to them, so I want to take this concept a little bit more in depth. In order to do that, I'm going to focus on two of our previous presidents, Abraham Lincoln and George Washington. These presidents are both very famous and well-loved, so they are perfect for a campaign and voting activity. In order to do this, I'm going to take my class and split them into groups. We create a People's Choice Presidential Award in my classroom. So my groups are actually going to create a campaign for their presidential candidate. Now we do have some rules for our campaign. Number one, it always has to stay respectful. And number two, it must be based on facts. When our campaign is over, we will then vote for the person that we think is most deserving. Although, of course, it's going to be a very tough decision. My students are aware that if they decide to vote for the person in the other party, that's perfectly fine. The first thing they have to do is conduct some background research. I provide them with some easy to read literature as well as access to technology. Then they get to create some fun posters and flyers to put up in the school hallway. Some of these have catchy slogans or presidential accomplishments and others just tell people to go out and vote and who to vote for. The groups or parties come together to create a presentation. The presentation does require a visual as well as engagement. 
The visual could include a PowerPoint, a trifold, or flyers. The engagement could be something as simple as a question and answer session, or another student could come up and participate in an activity with them. By now, I have modeled this for them several times, and they have also presented several different presentations as well, so they're pretty comfortable with this. I then have each student complete a chatter picks related to their candidate. They can be very creative with this. Once they're complete, I transfer each one of these to my computer and show them up on my Promethean board. This is a lot of fun. The students enjoy this, and it's like attending a presidential rally. The last thing we do before voting is create trading cards. I go into detail on how to make these in my Martin Luther King Jr. activities video. I have my students create two of these, one for each candidate. The reason that I do this is because I want the students to learn early on that it's important to do your research on all of the candidates so that you have unbiased information. Voting time. The students get to go to our voting booths at the front of the room in order to cast their ballots for the candidate that they feel to be most deserving for this reward. I make sure that our winner gets a spotlighted area within our room for a while, and then over the next week we complete fun activities related to him. This helps them learn more information about this individual. I hope I was able to provide you with a few extra ideas. I do try to keep my videos a little bit on the shorter side so that you're able to find what you need and put it into your lesson plans. My students have always enjoyed these activities and I hope that yours do as well. If you haven't subscribed yet, please make sure you do so as well as clicking the bell for notification and giving my video a big thumbs up. Thank you so much and please don't forget to leave a comment below to let me know if you utilize this in your classroom. Thank you so much for watching and remember to be proud of your work, productive in your day, and positively joyful.